Since August 6, Ukrainian soldiers have occupied dozens of Russian villages on more than 1,000 square kilometers and are digging in to repel an imminent Russian counteroffensive. Pokrovsk, the administrative center of a heavily industrialist agglomeration with a pre-war population of almost 400,000, is likely to be taken over by advancing Russian troops soon. They are less than 10 kilometers east of it, and keep inching in every minute after months of heavy bombardment and, meat marches, frontal attacks on Ukrainian positions that have cost Russian generals tens of thousands of servicemen. The depopulated town and several highways and railways it straddles have served as a crucial logistical hub for the Ukrainian military, and their takeover may burst the front line open and become a propaganda triumph for the Kremlin. Along eastern Ukraine's sprawling front line, however, the Russian army has been notching up territorial gains, cutting deeper towards the city of Pokrovsk in Donetsk province, a crucial supply and reinforcement hub for Ukraine's frontline troops, and claiming the capture of a nearby village, according to France 24. Before the attack on Kursk, the Russians were advancing in Donbass on seven fronts. Now they are stuck in Pokrovsk, their troops are moving from other directions to Kursk, the source of channel said. Moscow's troops have moved to within 10 kilometers of the strategic city, the UK's military intelligence reported on Monday as Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky conceded that the situation on the ground was difficult. While the Kursk offensive did force Russia to redeploy troops from parts of the front line, analysts caution, those movements did not affect the battle for Pokrovsk. In fact, Russian operations are now solely concentrated in the Pokrovsk region, said Gustav Gressel, a Ukraine war analyst at the European Council on Foreign Relations, adding that Moscow's forces were, kind of freezing other fronts. Before the Kursk offensive, the Russians were advancing on seven fronts in the Donbass, added Husian Aliyev, a Ukraine war expert at the University of Glasgow. And now it's only Pokrovsk, while some troops elsewhere are being redeployed to Kursk. Such maneuvers suggest there has indeed been a Kursk effect in the Donbass. The trouble for Kiev is that the effect is not being felt where it matters most. Strategic Industries Minister Alexander Kamishin, Justice Minister Denis Maliuska, Ecology Minister Russ Lynn Strelitz, Deputy Prime Minister for European and Euro-Atlantic Integration Ole Stefanishina, and Deputy Prime Minister and Reintegration Minister Irina Vereshchuk submitted their resignations to the Ukrainian Parliament, Chairman Russ Lynn Stefanchuk reported. Vitaly Koval, head of the State Property Fund of Ukraine, also submitted his resignation nine months after being in office. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmytro Kaleba has resigned from the post of Ukrainian Foreign Minister. The Speaker of the Ukrainian Parliament Ruslan Stefanchuk informed the Verkhovna Rada that the diplomat's statement had been received in his Facebook account. According to Stefanchuk, Ukraine's Parliament will consider officials' resignations at one of the next plenary sessions. In the Ukrainian segment of social networks, there is an active discussion about what is behind such an urgent and synchronous resignation of several ministers. Some users saw a bad sign in Kaleba's demarche and are demanding an explanation from the supreme power. Explain to the people what is happening. Why are you silent? Or will it be like February 24th, people write. There is also a version that Kaleba's resignation is connected not so much with his colleagues in the cabinet of ministers, but with unpleasant events, when the head of the Polish government, Donald Tusk, responded to Kaleba's statements on a historical topic. 